Ahoy there, my friends. Welcome aboard. I'm going to be your captain. I'm John Zadar, and we are going to be cruising through another episode of On Top and Hot. This is Monday, October 23rd. Now, I'm going to be sharing some hot OTC and penny stocks with you. I am trading all through the day, and while I'm trading, I am looking for stocks on any market under five bucks that have the potential to make us money. Now, when I look for these hot penny stocks, I do not go to the press releases or the filings first. That is way too much reading. I could get stuck there. As a matter of fact, even if I find a hot piece of news, it needs a hot chart for it to run in most cases. So I just do my due diligence looking at the charts first. I'm looking for charts that have heat. I'm looking for a chart that has a lot of volume coming in or maybe bouncing off of a low bubble or breaking through the 200. Something that makes that chart look hot. When I find the chart that has heat, then I go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for that catalyst. And when I find one, ta-da, I've got myself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I share with you on a regular basis. And I've got a few of those for you right now. But before we jump into those, I want to share some information I came across while I was waiting to do this show. I read a piece of news, came out three days ago. China is no longer going to be exporting graphite. They are going to keep all the EV critical battery metals to themselves. They had restricted exports, but now they've cut them out completely. Well, during my research today, I saw three graphite companies that were running. They don't have any news. They don't have any of their own catalysts. That was the catalyst. And I don't know how many graphite companies are out there, but you may want to take a look. The other piece of information I want to share with you, I actually found on this page over here, these daily advancers. These are all QX stocks, the best tier on the OTC, and they were taking strong gains, and I wanted to know why. Well, I found this one. This is ticker NXHSF, Next Hydrogen Solutions. She finished the day at 95 cents and did well over 50% gains. Now, here's the thing. Her most current piece of news is 13 days old. Though it is hot, Next Hydrogen secures $7.7 million agreement for a project involving a specialized nuclear application. Hydrogen and nuclear. That sounds real interesting to me. Now, I have not had time to read this news press. I just found it prior to making this video, but I thought you'd find this interesting as well. All right, let's take a look at the three stocks I got for you now. First stock I've got lined up for us is Sigmatron International, ticker SGMA. Now, most of the stocks we look at, we consider because their charts are breaking out. They're in an atypical breakout setting up or they're already breaking out. That's not the case with Sigma. This is a recovery chart. Back in July, she started running, and she didn't stop until September. A big, long run. Then came out her financials on 911. And they weren't the best, but they weren't that bad. And the stock fell. Fell, hell. It plummeted way too far. It's an overkill, folks. And I'm going to share the information with you, and I'm sure you're going to agree with me. And if this comes back only halfway, there are lots of gains to be taken. So Sigma finished the day at $2.98 with just under 3% gains. She's on the major exchange, the NASDAQ. So you're going to be able to trade this pre-market, after-market, and all your transactions are going to be free. So what does Sigmatron do? Well, they tell us over here that they are headquartered in Elk Grove, Illinois, they operate in one reportable segment as an independent provider of electronic manufacturing services. Their segment includes printed circuit board assemblies, electromechanical subassemblies, and completely assembled electronic products. The company and its wholly owned subsidiaries operate manufacturing facilities in Elk Grove Village, Illinois, Acuna, Chuhaha, and Tijuana, Mexico. Union City, California, Sezu, China, and Beihoi City, Vietnam. In addition, the company maintains international procurement offices and compliance and sustainability centers in Taipei, Taiwan. The company also provides design services in Elgin, Illinois, the United States. So they got lots of facilities in the United States, Mexico, and Asia. So let's check out that relative volume for the company. Ooh, 
She lost about 40% of her volume today, dropping from 90,000 shares down to 52,000 shares. And still, she managed to take some gains. Share structure for Sigma. Well, they don't give us a lot of information here, but we do have a low float. Even though they don't tell me that, I know it's low because they've only got 6 million in their outstanding share count. Anything under 10 million is a low float. So whatever it is, we're happy with it. Financials for Sigma. I wonder if this is going to come up or should I just jump over here? I knew it was going to take time, so I had it set up for myself. All right. Now, I want you to pay attention here because this is why the stock fell. We're looking at their financials on the annual. They were doing $281 million back in 2020. Now, we know that's millions because we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. At the end of 2023, now their year ends in April. So the very next quarter is going to be the first quarter for 2024 for them. So at the end of their fiscal year, they did $414 million, taking a profit of $51 million. Looking good. Now let's look at the quarterly. A year ago, the company did $105 million in that quarter. In the last quarter, the first quarter for 2024, they did $98 million. What's the difference? About $7 million. About 7%. That's the reason right there. Now, there is a little more to it that I'm going to share with you, but that's the primary thing. They dropped in revenue $7 million, which is only 7%. And we're going to get that information when we look at the news. But before we go there, let's take a look at these disclosures. We've got a lot of Form 4s here. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company stock. All of these are acquisitions, but none of them bought them. It looks like they bought them, but they didn't. All of these on October 3rd, there was 5,000 shares given to each director. And then back here, September 21st, the CEO or the CFO and the president each got 10,000 shares. Don't know exactly why, but they weren't purchased. And then we have an 8K here. This was a shareholder meeting where they had a vote. Now, these always scare me because I'm afraid they're going to vote in a reverse split. I jumped in. I looked at everything. They've already had the vote. No reverse splits. So there's no problems here. We are good to go. So let's take a look at that news. We've only got one piece of news to consider. This came out 9-11. It's all the information for why the stock fell. And I don't see enough information there to justify it. The company tells us that revenues from continuing operations decreased $7.1 million or 7%. Diluted income per share from continuing operations for the quarter ended at $0.04 cents, compared to $0.50 cents income per share for the same quarter the prior year. Yes, we have dropped, no doubt about that, but there is a reason for it. The company sold a majority position of its wholly owned subsidiary, WAGS Inc., effective April 1st, 2023. As a result, the company has reported results from WAGS for fiscal 2023 as discontinued operations. They're not making any money from this anymore. I am disappointed to report what is essentially a break-even quarter to begin our fiscal 2024. With the weakened economy, we are expecting this uncertainty to continue through the calendar year. So they're expecting things to be slow through the rest of this year, which is just, what, two and a half more months. While disappointed, we remain enthusiastic about the long-term prospects for our customers. We have several customers that participate in the infrastructure programs coming out of Washington, D.C., and we have others in markets where they have strong position and forecast future upside. Couple this with several new opportunities, and we think that we can generate later this fiscal year the revenue levels we have recently reported in preceding fiscal years. So basically, they sold something and they're not making any money from that subsidiary anymore, and they took a drop, just a little drop, 7%. But how much did the chart fall? You want to see? You're not going to believe this. I am so ready to do some charting. We're going to chart all these stocks on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. I got this free when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. And signing up with them, that's free too. So we're looking at Sigmatron International, ticker SGMA. And this is a six-month, four-hour view. 
We've got our low back in March of $2.06 and our high hit in September of $7.89. Now I've got some supports and resistances drawn here down in the low area, the battle zone. You can see that it was all pretty clustered here, but once you get up over top of this last resistance at $3.60, things are going to change. We've got a serious gap here and some serious running here. So I'm expecting once we get on top of that $3.60, we're going to see a lot more strength come into the game. Now, it was back here in July that she started her run. She ran hard all the way up here to August at $7.20, fell down, cutting through the 50, and then cut right back through it, climbing to a new high of $7.89. Then on 9-11, her financials came out. She fell 7% on revenues. Our current price here is roughly $750. It's actually $758, but we're going to call it $750. 7% of $750 is $0.55. Cents. But they told us that they expect business to be soft for the rest of the year. So let's take off another $0.50. Cents. Now we're down a dollar. No, that's not where she fell a dollar. She fell from $7.58 all the way down to $3.50. Folks, that is an overkill. Why did it have to go that far? And she wasn't done. She continued falling for about two weeks, came down here to $2.60, and right now she is getting ready. Now she is starting to work herself back up. How long this is going to take, I really don't know. She came down, hit this low. She was underneath every single SMA. She's worked her way over the 9, over the 20, She's tagged the 50. The 50's gotten very, very close. She's pushed over it a little bit, and she's come back down, and she is right up underneath it right now. Volume was strong today. She is starting. We don't know how long this is going to take. Oscillators, our PPO is underneath the pink line, but it is trying to come up ever so gently. Same thing going on with our MACD. It's trying to get up over that signal line. And our RSI has been climbing for about two weeks from a basement of 17 up to 53. Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. All right, you can see we were definitely in a downhill trend here, but the 200 has gotten close just like the 50, and it is right there, and we have tagged it already. So she got up on top of that 50, and she's been bouncing on that 50, not wanting to come down. She has tagged the 200, come back down to her 50, looks like she wants to climb. There's not a lot of indicators here, but we're seeing she's not falling anymore. Our oscillators, our PPO is now on top of the pink. It is pushing up gently. Same thing with our MACD. We've gotten over the signal line. We are pushing up. And our RSI is pretty planted right now, but it's over 55. We're up at 57 now. Checking out that five day, five minute. Oh, we got a lot of volatility here. She came down hitting this low bubble, smacking right on top of that 200 day SMA at $2.74. Shot to a high bubble of $3.07. Came all the way back down, almost didn't quite touch the 200. Bounce back up, and now she's jumping off of her 20-day SMA. Whoa, maybe the 50. She doesn't know where she wants to go, but she is fighting up. You can see our 200-day SMA is now pushing up. So if we can only get 50% of this, folks, let's back up to that four-hour chart. 50% is going to be right about here. You're looking at $2.50 uh, from $2.50 up to $7.55. Yes, $2.50 would be halfway up. If she only goes one-fourth up, that's a buck and a quarter. Folks, there's a lot of gains to be taken here. She's not in trouble. She just dropped a little bit in her revenues. You know, everybody's dropping a little bit, but not everybody's dropping their stock price like that. This is a judgment call. It's up to you, but I wanted to bring it to your attention. SGMA, put it on your watch list. You see some volume coming in. You may want to jump into this puppy. Now, here's a company we've talked about off and on, but you're going to be glad I brought it back into your attention today. This is ticker INPX, Inpixian. Now, I'll be honest. I did not find this one by looking at the charts. Had I seen the chart, I'd have just gone right by it because there's nothing impressive. <laughs> the four-hour chart is a downtrend with just an inkling of signs that she may want to climb. 
The one hour chart, that does look a little better, but not a whole lot. So why are we looking at it? Because she had huge news come out. She's doing everything. She's doing a spin out and she is issuing dividends to us. She is doing a merger at the same time with a very hot company. In Pixian finished today at 11 cents with just about 12% gains. And she too is on the NASDAQ. So what does in Pixian do? Well, don't trust this description. That ain't right. We got a description over here. In a nutshell, they do what Google Maps does, but for indoors. They map indoors for buildings, uh, anything, any big establishment. They map people, offices, all sorts of things. They tell us here that Impixion is the innovator of indoor intelligence, delivering actionable insights for people, places, and things. Combining the power of mapping, Positioning and analytics in Pixian helps to create smarter, safer, and more secure environments. The company's indoor intelligence and industrial real-time location system technology are leveraged by a multitude of industries to optimize operations, increase productivity, and enhance safety. In Pixian, customers can take advantage of industry-leading location awareness, analytics, sensor fusion, IIoT and the Internet of Things to create exceptional experiences and to do good with indoor data. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, that's not bad. She jumped from 13 million shares up to 43 million shares, more than 300% increase on her volume. Share structure for INPX. All they tell us is the outstanding share count. That is at 72 million. The float, it can be anywhere up to 72 million or it could be considerably less. Market cap seems very, very low. That is only at $7 million. Let's take a look at the financials for Impixian. Doing quite well over the last four years. Each year increasing her revenues, jumping from 6 million to 9 million to 15 to almost 20 million at the end of 2022. And their profit margin growing right along with the revenues. Looking at the quarterly, well, that's a bit interesting. A year ago, she was at 2.5 million. She climbed up to 5.2 million, and she's come back down to 2 million. But she's still making money. She's still making profits. Looking at that balance sheet. Okay, cash in the bank. They've got 15.6 million. They've got a total of 30.4 million in assets. Total liabilities is 22 million. So we've got more assets and we got liabilities and their revenues are there. They could increase them a little bit, but let's be honest. We're not looking at this stock because of the money she's making her revenues. We're looking at it because she's got a spin out and a merger right around the corner. So let's take a look at these disclosures. Oh yeah, the 8K, 8K and 425 all relate to this deal. So let's jump on into this. So this is the news that came out today. Damon Motors, the makers of the award-winning Hypersport EV motorcycle, announces merger with Impixian LTD and plans for NASDAQ listing of combined company. Now this is kind of tricky to read, so I'm going to have to ad-lib a little bit here. Damon Motors announces it has signed a definitive agreement with Impixian LTD to complete a reverse merger with a proposed spinoff of Graffiti Holdings. Now, what's going to happen here is Inpixion is taking some of their subsidiaries and spinning them out into graffiti, and that's going to go on to the NASDAQ. After the spin-out is done and we got our dividends, then there's going to be a merger with Damon Motors. Damon Hypersport is expected to be one of the safest, smartest, and most powerful motorcycles available in the market. Damon has received more than $70 million in funding to date and has secured more than $85 million in pre-production consumer reservations for its motorcycles. They already have $85 million worth of orders for the bike. In connection with the business combination, Graffiti will affect a spinoff of all the outstanding capital stock of Graffiti to the holders of Inpixion. Following the spinoff, Damien will acquire graffiti by a three-way cornered amalgamation. There's going to be a very tricky merger. This is what we're looking at, folks. A spin-out and a dividend and a merger following that. It is hot. 
but the chart, not so much. Let's go take a look at it. Taking a look at Inpixion, ticker INPX. That's a six-month, four-hour view. We've got our high bubble in April of $1.84, and at the end of September, we hit a low of $0.09. Cents. Now, she is on a serious downtrend here, but she had one heck of a rip. She jumped here from about $0.30 cents up to $1.84, over 600% gains right there, and came back down. And I don't know why she jumped. She came under a 200, and she pretty much flatlined down here. Once the 200 got close, she made another attempt to run. She jumped this time from 14 cents up to 39 cents. You're looking at 150% gains. Came back down with a lot of bobbling around. Another jump, another jump. You see, she likes to jump. And today, she had a little wee jump. She jumped here from uh, about 10 cents up to... 13 and a half cents, just a little over 25% gains. But what she did is important. She came down from underneath everything, through everything, on top of the 200 with a wick, came back down no lower than where she started from. That's not looking bad. Our oscillators, our PPO has just had a crossover and is pushing up just like our MACD had a crossover on the line and the signal line. And our RSI is climbing, and it's up to 62 right now. 20-day, one-hour view. So we got a pop over the 200. She was under it here, popped up. Well, she likes to do this a lot. Get under the 200, rip over it, and come back down under it. She hit a high here from $0.12 cents to $0.24, cents, another 100% rip. Came down to that low bubble of $0.09, cents, came back up, and she's just been going sideways. Once she got close to the 200, she tried again, but boy, she's really tired or weak or something. And then today, now we've got a reason to get pumped up. She had a big rip, came down, and she's been going sideways on top of her 9. She had this spike come down and come back up. I think she's ready to climb. Osculators agree with me. Our PPO is pushing up real hard and fast, just like our MACD, and our RSI is now up at 66, tagging the overbought. Five day, five minute. So she's on the 200 now. She rode under it, and she's been trying to hang around it. Thank God for the catalyst. That really pushed this up high, which has yanked our 200-day SMA. She was downhill. See this? She's coming down, and right after this spike, that was strong enough to pull a 200-day SMA up. That is power. She came back down, went sideways, tagged the new 200 up here, and she is now starting to push off. Osculators say she's in recovery mode right now. Everything is turned around and starting to push off. And there's my favorite setup right there between my PPO, percentage price oscillator, and my ADX, what I like to call trend continuation. Whenever I see that blue line going up and that red line going down and they're going further and further apart, guaranteed 100% your stock is rising. RSI right now is at 58%. The game is just getting started, folks. It really wasn't about the chart because I didn't find it through the chart. I found it through the news. And you got to admit, this is hot news. Not only do we have a spin out with dividends, but we got a merger behind it. Outstanding. Come on, folks. Put INPX on your watch list and start watching it immediately. You know, if I'm not careful, I could end up falling into some old habits. I found another stock looking at the news. This is NAS Technology, ticker N-A-A-S. I couldn't help it, folks. It's big news. A huge investor came in. Looks like it's going to be a change of control. Her chart, I'd have gone right by it if I was scanning charts for heat. She hasn't got any heat. She's been in a downtrend for a while. She's got a little hook at the bottom, but that's about all. However, the news looks really intense, and I think it may change this chart. NAS finished the day at $3.47 with about 5.5% gains, and she too is on the NASDAQ. So what is NAS Technologies about? Well, they are the first U.S.-listed EV charging service company in China. The company is a subsidiary of New Links Technology Limited, a leading energy digitalization group in China. The company provides one-stop EV charging solutions to charging stations comprising online EV charging, offline EV charging, and also innovative charging solutions, as you're seeing in the video right now.
Now, as of June of this year, they had already connected 652,000 chargers covering 62,000 charging stations, which represents virtually half of all the Chinese market. That's how big this is. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Really? <laughs> I'm surprised. All right, she dropped. She went from 855,000 shares down to 674,000 shares. Share structure for NAS Technologies. All they tell us is the outstanding shares. That's about 55 million. We know our float won't be any higher than that and hopefully a lot lower. Our market cap, that is about 18 million. Checking out the financials for NAS Technologies weren't making anything in 2019, almost did a million dollars in 2020, kicked that up five times to 5.2 million in 2021, and then more than doubled that in 2022 to 13.3 million. Checking out our quarterlies, whoa, we don't get anything. All right, let's take a look at our balance sheet. Well, that's not looking bad. We got lots of money in the bank, about $74 million. Total assets, 159 million total liabilities about 95 million which gives us shareholder equity which is what we want of 63 million dollars Woohoo! all right let's go check out those disclosures these two disclosures are very important this sc 13d these are filed whenever new investors come in and they buy so much that they own a percentage of the company well, this was the takeover. Now, I'm going to go to the news first, and then we'll look at this because it makes more sense in that order. NAS Technology and its parent company, New Link. Now, remember, we just got done reading about New Link. This is updated. This is the new company. They just took over. They tell us over here that NAS Technology and its parent company, New Link, formed strategic partnership with China Construction Bank, to progress its new energy globally. NAS Technology, the first U.S. listed EV charging service company in China, today announced that its parent company, New Link, a world leading energy IoT solution provider, remember, they got half of the business in China for electric charging, and China's largest digital energy asset operator, has partnered with China Construction Bank, CCB. CCB will provide New Link and NAS Technology Inc. with integrated financial services. Now, this entire paragraph here, this paragraph here, and this paragraph partway through here, they are all talking about all the different ways that this bank is going to finance them. For all these different things they may or may not want to do, the door is wide open for them. Now, those filings, there is New Link Technology. This is the form they file whenever a new investor comes in. Well, he bought what they they bought 1.6 billion shares of the company. They now own 70% of the company. The voting power of the shares beneficially owned represents 88%. New Link has 88% voting control of this company. That is control of the company. They give you a lot more information here if you want to read all of this. They explain what it's all about. Then you've got a couple other investors that are all part of this. Zendai, he got himself a quarter million shares. He owns about 12% of the company and has 41% voting control. Then we've got a couple small ones down here. Yang Wang, he got himself 3%. Well and Sun, they got themselves 1.7%. You add it all up, it comes out to about 86% of the company. That is a takeover. So between having all the money that they need from one bank to take care of anything they want to do and this new company coming in, buying up all the shares, you know they got plans. They got things they want to do. I'm expecting the chart to move. Let's pray for that. Let's go take a look at the chart. Let's take a look at the chart for NAS Technologies, whatever it may be. This is ticker NAAS. This is a six-month, four-hour view. We've got a high bubble in April of $12.78 and a low bubble in October of $2.90. Now, this was one heck of a run, and I don't know what caused it, but she went from $4 to $12.78. 
over 300% run. Then she had this big bounce, came down to the 200, and the price just fell away. Well, I could almost predict that was going to happen. You know how? Because of this big M on the board. You see it clear and defined? M for murder. In many cases, when you see a well-defined M on the board, the price will just drop out from underneath it. If you see a well-defined W for winner, you normally see a run right off of that W. We had the M. <laughs> she came down here to $4.63, bounced back over the 200, got up to $7.22, and then fell all the way down to that low bubble. Now, right now, she's bounced off of that low. She went right through all of the SMAs to the 50, got up on top of the 50, has fallen underneath it, but she is on top of the 20. She then fell underneath the 9, and right now, she's getting on top of the 50, on top of the 20, on top of the 9. All three of them at the same time with that move. Nothing special to talk about in the volume. Our oscillators, our PPO is about ready to have a crossover and is pushing up. Our MACD is about ready to cross the signal line, and our RSI is cool at 53. But we do have that set up. My PPO is going up. My ADX trend continuation is going down. I know my price is rising when that pattern sets up. Let's take a look at that 20-day, one-hour view. So we got a high here of $5.17, well underneath the 200, cracking the 50. She then fell down to that low and then bounced back up over that 50, getting close to the 200, but not close enough. Came down underneath everything, and now, come on, she is setting up for a breakout. She was underneath all the SMAs two days ago, pushed herself up over all of them, did not break the 200. That I wish we could have seen, a nice spike coming up. She came up to it, fell back, no lower than where she started, virtually the same, and she's floating on her nine-day SMA right now, encroaching on that 200. Our SMAs underneath it are all starting to turn up. Oscillators are all pushing up, except our RSI, which is pretty flat. The rest of them are kind of flat, but they've got a little push to them. Looking at our five-day, five-minute, wow, what a lot of volatility. Five days ago, we were at 368 on top of the 200 fell under the 200, looks like she wanted to come back, really tried, could not make it. Broker spirit fell all the way down to this low bubble of $3.04, and then she started working towards the 200 just slowly and methodically. Once she got to it, she didn't slow up, she kept pushing, had a nice breakout pre-market today, came down just as far as she started, and she's been floating on the 20-day SMA most of the day, and the 9 the rest. And here at the end of the day, she's fallen back. She has come underneath the 50-day SMA. That I don't like. Just out of curiosity, I want to go back and I want to see if there's a SMA that she can fall on there or is she just in the air? There you go. I am on the 15-minute chart right now. You saw she came under the 50 and she's just floating there in the air and you're going, oh my God, that's a big gap down to the 200. No, she ain't going that far. We have to go into other charts and look for SMA she's hitting. Right here, folks, she is wrestling with this 20-day SMA. I'm thinking she's going to bounce off of it. That is one heck of a weird turn right there. Here comes our 50-day SMA crossing the 200. That is a golden cross, and our 200 haul is right behind it. I'm thinking this has a chance to take off, folks, and she's at a good position. She's really low right now. So go ahead and put NAAS on your watch list. I don't know if this new uh, people coming in have any changes in mind or if they're going to continue doing the same thing. I just know that they had a lot of money. They just invested in this, so I'm sure they have plans. NAAS. It's going to be a wild card. Man, I am glad to be done with this video. And it's not because of you or me. It's because of the otcmarkets.com website. This is my primary source of information. And it went down yesterday. I couldn't use it to make my video yesterday. And it didn't come back up until today. Well, while I was making my video, the finance page, only the finance page would not come up. I had to keep shutting down. And it would take me 15 minutes refreshing the page, refreshing the page, trying to get it up. But we managed to get through it.
Now, today's show was a little different. Normally, we have three hot charts to go with three catalysts. Today, we've only got one hot chart. But I think I've made it up to you because the other two, even though they haven't got hot charts, are really big catalysts. Now, what I need you to do is some more due diligence. You know I didn't cover it all, and it is your money you're investing. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.